Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom here. I wanted to make a quick video to talk about average atomic mass. This calculation can be a little bit tricky, but I think you'll see that it is ultimately very similar to other types of calculations you've done if you've ever calculated any sort of weighted average. So the first thing I wanna do is define what is the average atomic mass. This is going to be a weighted average. We'll explain what that is in a minute of the masses of all isotopes of an element and they're weighted according to their natural abundance. So first let's take an a simplified example. Let's say we have an element X, which isn't a real element, but let's say there's X 71 and X 72. And let's say it's divided totally equally 50% of each in the natural abundance. If that's true, then when we take our weighted average of these, we're just going to add 71 and 72 and divide by 2 and we're going to get 71.5 for our average. We just do it like a regular average because there's equal amounts of them. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this written out the way we would do it if we we're doing the weighted average and they weren't 50%. So I've got 71, that's my first isotope. I'm going to multiply by 0.5. That's my 50%. Then I'm gonna add 72 multiplied by 0.5. And then when I do that, I'm gonna end up with 71.5 as my weighted average. So we get the same thing regardless of which way we did it because our 0.5, the 50%, is just the same as our 1 half that we put up here. Now, what if instead of this being 50% and 50%, we have 30% and 70%? We're gonna do the math the same way, except instead of 50%, I'm gonna plug in 30% and 70%. So 71 times 0.3 gives me 21.3 and 72 times 0.7 gives me 50.4. When I'm done, I get 71.7. .7. So I wanna talk about this for a second. We should notice we had more of this isotope that had a mass of 72 than we did of the mass 71 isotope. And therefore, when we take the average and it's weighted by how much we have, we expect our answer to be closer to 72 than 71, and that's exactly what we saw here. Okay, now this is a very similar kind of math. If you imagine, for example, you're calculating your grade in a class, and 30% of your grade is for homework, and you have 100%. 70% of your grade is for exams, and you have, let's give you an 85% on your exam score, okay? And now you wanna know what's my grade in the class. So you take your score, 100%, and you multiply by 0.3 for your homework, and you take your score for your exams, 85%, and you multiply by 0.7 for your exams. So we get, 30 plus 85 times 0.7 is 59.5. We end up with 89.5 for our overall grade in the class. And of course, if this is Chem 105, we round that up to 90. So you get an A minus. Well done. Um, so this is what we're dealing with with a weighted average. It works just the same way that you would calculate your grade if you were calculating an average for a course grade where you had exams and homework that were weighted differently. So let's do a real example now. Let's take the example of copper. Copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. There's copper 63 
and copper 65. Copper 63 is more common. It makes up 69.17% of the copper that we find on the earth, while 30.83% is going to be copper 65. And the mass of these, if we're going to be real precise, it's not exactly 63. It's 62.930. Um, and this one is 64.928. So this is our mass. This is our percent abundance. And this is the isotope we're talking about. So what we're going to do here is figure out what is the average atomic mass for copper. Again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take my mass, 62.930. I'm going to multiply by the percent, 0.6917. And then I'm going to take my other mass, 64.928. And I'm going to multiply by its percent, abundance, 0 0.3083. And when I do this, I'll do them one at a time. 62.930 times 0.6917 gives me 43.5287. I'll keep four decimal places for now. Um, and then we have 64.928 times 0 0.3083. That gives me 20.0173. When I add these together, I end up with 63.5460. Um, I should only have four sig figs in my answer because of these guys. I want to pause here for a minute and talk about sig figs. So you'll notice in this top line of the calculation, I have 62.930, which has five sig figs, times 0.6917 which has four sig figs. So when I multiply those together, the answer will have four sig figs. And the same is true for the other calculation with 64.928 with five sig figs, and then 0 0.3083 that has four sig figs. So both of those answers are going to have four sig figs. Now when I wrote them down below, I kept more decimal places than that. And that's because you never round off until you're at the final piece of the calculation. So I wrote 43.5287, but I know that number should have four sig figs, or in other words, it would be rounded off at the hundredths place, the second decimal place. Um, the same is true for 20.0173. I would need to round that off at the hundredths place. I didn't do that yet because I'm still going, but I've just kept a note of that in my mind, that those should have two decimal places. So now when I get my final answer, 63.5460, I know I should round that off to two decimal places, which is why I end up getting 63.55. So I'll round this to 63.55. And indeed, 63.55 is probably what you're going to see if you look on the periodic table for copper. As the average atomic mass that takes into account the abundance of the different isotopes of that element. Okay, I want to do one more example, and this is another type of problem that you might encounter, where we're going to know the mass of the isotope, but we're not going to know its abundance. So I'm going to have oxygen 16, oxygen 17, and oxygen 18, three isotopes of oxygen. The mass of each of these isotopes is 15.995, 16.995, and 17.999. And I know that the natural abundance of oxygen 16 is 99.759%. And I know for oxygen 17, it's 0.037%. Um, but I don't know what the natural abundance is of oxygen 18. I do know when I look on the periodic table that the average atomic mass is 15.999. So what I want to do is calculate the percent abundance of my oxygen 18. I'm going to set up my calculation just exactly the same way as I did before. I'm just going to have to do the calculation a little bit differently. So I'm starting with my mass, 15.995, and that's my 99.759%. 
I'll add my oxygen 17, 16.995 times 0 0.00037. That's changing that percent to uh, just a regular decimal. And then the last one, I've got 17.999, but I don't know what the percent abundance is. When I add those all together, I should get 15.999. So what I'm going to do is calculate these first two, 15.995 times 0.99759 gives me 15.956. Sixteen point nine nine five times point zero 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 three seven gives me point zero zero six two nine, and then I'm gonna have this number here that I can't get rid of seventeen point nine 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 x, and all of that's gonna equal fifteen point nine nine nine. I'm gonna subtract these two from my fifteen point nine nine nine, so I'll get seventeen point nine 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 x equals 15.999 minus 15.956 minus 0 0.00629. And that gives me 0 0.03671. I'm gonna divide both sides by 17.999. And I get X equals 0 0.00204, which would be the same as 0.204 percent abundance. Again, pausing for a minute to talk about sig figs here. In our first row, we've got 15.995 times 0.99759. Both of those have five sig figs, so our answer will have five sig figs, 15.956. However, that translates, because the next step is addition, to three decimal places. Uh, the second calculation there, five sig figs times two sig figs, is only going to have two sig figs. And in our answer, that would mean four decimal places. So it would be rounded if we were rounding to 0 0.0063. Um, we never round, of course, until the very end. So uh, we're going to leave it as 0 0.00629. Um, but we're going to keep a note that four decimal places is what we've got. Now, in this last step, we take our 15.999 on the right. We subtract the 15.956 and the 0 0.00629. That means we've got a number with three decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places. We're going to have to round it off to the third decimal place to be consistent here. So in our 0 0.03671, it would really be 0 0.036, or in other words, two sig figs. When we do the last step, which is division, we've got two sig figs divided by five sig figs. Our answer should have two sig figs, and we should write 0.20% abundance, not 0.204. So that's the other kind of problem that you can see here where you know the abundance of some and not others, and you have to solve for the percent abundance. I hope that's helpful. Have a wonderful day.